Hello again. Now we're not going to get much further along this path without talking about chromatic harmony. Up till now we've done very well just with triads and seventh chords and everything else was behaving more or less like some sort of a red herring. But now uh, we really have to face that there's not only sevenths but of course also ninths and minor ninth chords. Then there are not only major, minor, diminished triads, but also augmented triads. That is actually the last one on the list. There are only these four types of triad, but the augmented becomes very important with chromatic harmony. Uh, the next on our list is the augmented sixth chord. Now we met this briefly. It looks awfully like a dominant seventh, but instead of resolving like this, it goes up like this. So instead of going down to F major, it goes up to E minor. Okay, it's a very convenient tool for modulation. Schubert is very fond of it. Uh, there are three types of these augmented sixths. Um, we call them German, Italian and French. I shall go into the detail of that a little more later on. The last type of uh, chromatic chord we need to deal with uh, is the Neapolitan sixth. Again in C major, this is the second degree of the scale, and the Neapolitan is the second degree flattened. It's very good, particularly in minor chords, and with these changes around, um, composers use this to milk pathos out of a phrase. Then we need uh, to look at our red herrings again because these don't have to be diatonic, they don't have to be in the key, they can also be chromatic. And a chromatic passing note can give a great deal of extra weight to the new chord, the new consonants that comes after it. Same goes for a, a chromatic changing note. Okay, so now we're armed, let's have a closer look at Schubert. This is Schäfer's Klagenied. Now that's just an innocent C minor, but we've had these... We have these rhythms, which we called Siciliano before. These remind us somehow of our shepherds. We're talking about a Schäfer's Klagenied as a, as a shepherd's lament, so that we have an unhappy shepherd. So Schubert does this immediately. He sets the scene just with this little Siciliano, its association of shepherds and the, the minor chords to accompany it. And then comes the very first surprise. Okay, this is our minor ninth. No, Schubert is not the first person to use this. Mozart was using it for moments of great tragedy, but he always uses it as a as an appoggiatura and resolves it. Now Schubert resolves this eventually as well, but somehow it stays just that little bit too long. So that it somehow, it, it, it sinks with more weight in there. And um, this is, again, pathos. We'll carry on. Okay, we've had a changing note, which is chromatic. There's no D-flat in C minor, so we know we must have gone into a new key, and to support that, we have a C7. Oh, we know we're going to end up soon in F minor, which we do. But it's a very promiscuous modulation, if it's a modulation at all, because he comes straight back to his C minor. D diminished with a seventh, so it's the sort of the, se the seventh chord of the second step of the scale, and we get it in an inversion with the A flat in the bass with an A natural, a chromatic passing note. This is going to be a chord of B flat seven, which is going to take us into E 
flat major. But we have the ninth there. Again, taking us a little bit away from the, the clarity of the harmony, but we have definitely now modulated to our relative major. Now, we have to take time out to discuss this augmented triad. It behaves very much like a dominant seventh. It seems to want to go to the keynote a fifth below it. And this is precisely what Schubert does here. We're in E flat major, which as you remember is the relative major. In a sonata form, this would be where we would expect our second subject, which is more or less what Schubert does. That's just a tonic pedal. note, a chromatic passing note, making an augmented chord. Now this is important, I've accentuated it slightly. The D is just a passing note, but the C sharp, my ear registers first of all as a D flat, and I think I'm going to get this. Instead I get, which is this augmented that I talked about. Now, again, I have to take time out to discuss augmented chords. They probably came around like this. Now, I'm in G minor, all right? So this is the fourth step with its seventh, and that's G minor, and that's just a straightforward cadence in G minor. Now, if I take a chromatic passing note, it still is fairly innocent. Now, if I leave out the first note, I get my German sixth really take us by that much surprise, especially as composers have been doing this for quite a long time since that. The next one in this family of sixths is again the Italian. This is just the fourth step without its, uh, its seventh. So it's the same harmony, just without that seventh. And then there's the Italian sixth. So, the last one in the family is the so-called French sixth. This begins, again, if we're still in G minor, this is the second degree of the scale with its seventh. And then I do a chromatic passing note, and then just leave out the first note again, and that's our found the French sixth. Having arrived in G minor, perfect cadence, just establishes the key. Now these two notes I retain, the others I change, and I have a mediant relationship jumping from there into E flat 7. Well that's bound to take me to a sort of A flat major. And now we're getting almost cheerful. There's a bit of salon music now. A few things to talk about here. We have a tonic pedal going right the way through, and we have dominant sevenths, again with the pedal going through there. And the ends with a chord of A flat seven, so we're going to go into D flat major probably. Now we expect him to carry on. He might have done something like that. Instead, look at the pathos that comes. We've suddenly gone into D-flat major. By turning that into minor, and then having another awfully heavy appoggiatura on the ninth. This is, these are chromatic passing notes. And then a straightforward Dominant sevenths, except it's not straightforward at all. Here is a, a, a suspension on the fourth, which resolves. 
onto the G and before we finally get to our A flat major as we expect once again, the composer cheats us. Instead of going into A flat major, he goes to A flat minor. And now we have real drama. We're talking about storms and tempests and rain and we're, you know, life as a shepherd is not always fun. And then again, he does another medium hop, taking these two notes from A flat minor and turning it into C flat major. Now again, I have to take some time out and we still have to talk about something called the Neapolitan sixth. This is B flat major. Nothing wrong with that. One, four, one, five with seven and one again. And here it is with a two instead of the four. Again, nothing wrong with that, completely standard harmony. Now I flatten the second degree of the scale and make a C flat major out of this, and then come back to my B flat major. And you see what pathos we get out of this. Um, uh, you may know this little piece of Beethoven. That's just the sixth degree. Now, if I play the second degree of the scale, you'll have a shock. Because what he does, of course, is a Neapolitan. Okay? This is an example of the sort of little sob that you can catch out of this uh, Neapolitan. I suppose it must have got its name from an, uh, the, this tenor uh, grabbing his, uh, his heart as he sings something awfully tragic. Um, however, I don't know where this name really did come from, but it's, it's got stuck in harmony now. We're talking about the second degree of the scale, flattened. Okay? So, here it is then in um, in the context, we've come from, we came, sorry, into C flat major, and we're going to go use it as the Neapolitan just to slide down back into B flat without much warning. And how he does it is this he starts in C flat major, here's a passing note, we think we're still in C flat major, but now. We start to wonder, this is C-flat 7, and now he goes down with this, making a French 6th, taking us into B-flat major. And then he repeats the Neapolitan, and this is a German 6th to end with. Well now we're more or less on home ground, a fairly innocent recapitulation of the second subject. Now a slight alteration from what he did the first time, but he can't leave it, he has to have this chord in there. And we are back to C minor actually and we can recapitulate the first subject. Again, he's altered the end to bring us back to C minor quickly. Now he repeats this little cadence in F minor, sure about our tonality really but we are going to come back he ends in C minor again but the little coda from the piano there's a quick modulation again to F minor then the seventh degree of the scale with its seventh and a pedal note
I hope you'll take the time to look at some of your favourite Schubert songs in this type of light. If you can get used to handling chromatic harmony, you'll be well on your way to the type of things we're going to be asking you to do for the 20th and 21st centuries. All for now.